Welcome everybody to your planet. It's my planet. It's our planet, but it's mostly my planet. And it's not Mitch McConnell's planet. Planet Hog, baby. Back at you again. I'm not in a real cheery mood, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not in a real cheery mood today. Uh, you know... So obviously today I'm going to be talking about Senate leader Mitch McConnell essentially uh, bending the knee and, uh, you know, uh, declaring Joe Biden the president elect, even though yet again, the process is not actually over, Uh, but that's not the point anymore. That's not the point. And, uh, you know, usually I like to kind of goof around a little bit before we jump in, but ah, today I think I'm just going to jump in, man, because this is, I'm glad this is happening. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's, I mean, okay. I'm not happy that it's happening, but there's a silver lining in it. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Uh, you know, I had a conversation, good conversation with a uh, dear friend of mine the other day. And um, we were kind of talking about this whole thing. And he was telling me, you know, dude, basically I've unplugged from all this shit, man. I'm I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm waiting to see what happens. But uh, I'm done. And I can understand that. I can understand that. I am uh, a bit more stubborn than he. So I'm more, I'm not licked yet. Um, But we talked about the Republican Party. And these runoff elections. And he and I actually agreed on this. You know, uh, it's always good to talk to him because, you know, you, sometimes you have those friends who, um, you know, you're really close with them. And uh, you tend to think along the same lines, the same thought processes. Excuse me. It's a little bit of life happening outside there. There it is. All right. But you have the same values, you think along the same, you know, you you have the same kind of general way of looking at things, Um, but you arrive there different ways, if that makes sense. Uh, He's one of those, Uh, so we don't necessarily always agree. In fact, a lot of the times our, our perspectives are kind of counter to each other, but they ultimately lead in generally the same direction. Um, but anyway, we kind of talked about, um, these runoff elections and we actually agreed on this and, you know, Georgia's going to do what they're going to do. Um, however, if I don't, I don't understand how, uh, you know, I understand people have the right to do what they want to do, but I, I'm just talking about logically. I don't understand how you vote for any of these representatives that have the elephant or the R next to their name. I, and again, I've said this before, I am not a registered Republican. I have never been a registered Republican. I will never be a registered Republican because this Mitch McConnell is a perfect embodiment of the Republican Party. He's old, he's feeble, he's, you know, he, he's, he just goes along. There's no fight in him. He is a relic of a bygone era. And through no fault of his own, really, he's just, he's antiquated. He is a telegraph in the age of the cell phone. Politically, he's outdated. Um, Politically, his style of politics is outdated. And this is giving him the full benefit of the doubt. This is assuming he's not part of the swamp, right? But his style of Again, just and I alluded to this uh, a couple casts back when I was talking about uh, SCOTUS, 
this idea of preserving the process over everything else. I don't understand that at this juncture. There was a time when, yes, that the big picture, keeping everything together, keeping a lid on it, not letting things boil over. We're past that. I'm sorry, we're fucking past that now. That world does not exist. The idea of keeping, again, preserving the system. I don't understand how you preserve a system that has been defrauded. That has clearly been defrauded. And... As a matter of fact, now that I say that, it's a good time to remind you guys that you can find me over on Rumble because it's only a matter of time before YouTube decides to get rid of videos like this. Even little old me. Anyway, I just don't understand Mitch McConnell and the Republicans. And again, when I say Republicans, you know, there are a couple of good ones, maybe, um, Obviously, Ted Cruz, he's he's I've I've lauded him many times. He's the one Republican that everybody knows because he does everything. And, you know, it was funny as I was looking uh, through some of the news here on uh, what the hell news station is this that comes up default on this computer? What the fuck is this? I think this is like Apple News or whatever. All right, whatever, um, which is amazing, right? Why the fuck? Everywhere I go, it's like Bill Gates. He's weighing in on COVID lockdowns. He's weighing in on what news is what. Why does he? Okay. Well, we know why. But it's funny that no one seemingly on the other side asked this question. Like, wait, why the fuck does Bill Gates have an opinion on this? When when my phone stops working or when I want a cool app, I'll, we can talk to you about that. Anyway. Um, it, it, as I'm looking through this, it's, I saw that Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida has, uh, refused to, uh, acknowledge Joe Biden as president elect and good for you, Ron. Good for you. Um, you know, I'm still trying to feel him out. He's made a lot of decisions that I agree with. Uh, but <laughs> it's funny. Something just popped up from CNN. Mitch McConnell deserves no praise for finally recognizing Joe Biden. See, that's what I don't get from these Republicans. When you finally do bow down, because that's what you do. When you finally do give up and roll over. It's not like. You're received graciously. It's not like. You're forgiven for past transgressions, you know, the transgression of thinking differently and accept it into the flock. I just don't understand what you gain other than, other than, which is leading me to the point I was trying to get to. I am of the firm belief we're looking at this the wrong way. We are looking at this, you know, for the sake of illustrating the juxtaposition of point of view and perspective, we're looking at this problem longitudinally, and it's a latitudinal problem. And by that, I mean this. We think it's Democrat, Republican, conservative, liberal. But what this is proving to me is that, oh, sorry, pausing because a picture of Melania Trump just popped up. Okay. Uh, what this is proving to me is that it's really politicians versus us all. It's really, that's, that's the game. And sometimes we win, sometimes you win. But the important thing is, because if you notice, um, you know, they're still talking about stimulus relief. And they'll keep dangling that carrot, right? But. When it comes to avoiding a Senate shutdown, they get that shit done immediately. They get their, they secure their money. They secure the proverbial bag for themselves uh, effortlessly. So it's obviously not a party versus party, political perspective versus political perspective issue. Obviously not, because they can get themselves paid. But when it comes to you and I, oh. Well, now we can we can play our game. We can do our dance. So. 
I'm grateful for President Trump for a lot of things. One of them is, you know, it's like those action movies where you kind of, uh, like those old like uh, adventure type movies uh, where people are exploring some kind of cave or crypt or cavern or whatever. And they come up to this pit and they drop one of those like green glow sticks down. And you see how far down the hole is. Donald Trump is that. He, he was that green glow stick. Orange, if you prefer. And... Now we're seeing just how deep it goes. And a lot of the Trump supporters, the Trump supporting conservatives, whatever you want to call, um, although we are two completely separate people, I will say that because a lot of quote unquote Republicans have already turned the page and said, oh, OK, well, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get them in another four years. Oh, I just I'm just going to get up and go to work tomorrow and, you know, don't, you know, take care of the family and just be another day. And. You know, a lot of them are good people. I know a lot of people like that. So I'm trying not to say that they're fucking cowards and they're fucking weak. <sighs> but they're fucking cowards and they're fucking weak. Because at what point do you... I understand playing the long game. I definitely understand that. I understand that there are safeguards in the Constitution that can prevent Joe Biden from doing anything totally crazy. Although, I don't know. Because that's assuming that the Republicans hold the Senate, which I don't think is a foregone conclusion. Uh, but at what point do you say, OK, do you step back and realize that you are sacrificing the future for a little bit more time now? That you are at what point do you say, OK, but what world am I leaving behind for my kids? What world am I leaving for them to grow up in and face? It's very selfish. It's very short-sighted. Uh, and to be honest, I think a lot of people who say that are simply hiding their cowardice behind being a responsible adult, behind being, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm a father first. And I'm not, obviously, I'm not decrying being a father first. But I think a lot of people, I, I don't think these two things are mutually exclusive. You can have convictions. You can stand up against wrongdoing and still be a, a father. Some would argue that makes you a better father. So, you know, I, I as far as this whole thing goes with Mitch McConnell doing that, look, eh, I'm honestly surprised it took this long. I'm not surprised that he did it. Now, that doesn't necessarily make me any less disappointed, any less disgusted. It's not really disappointed at this point. It's disgusted. Uh, disappointed would be if I had expected better. And I don't. Now, I'll tell you who is disappointing me is Dinesh D'Souza. Because, you know, I, a couple of his last videos, it's very interesting. If you're not watching this carefully enough, uh, there's a separation that's happening and it's not so much being a quote unquote blind Trump supporter. It's not so much being a quote unquote blind Trump loyalist. It's about the, how this all went down. Just, and not, not just that, but you multiply that by the factor of the incessant, interminable harassment that the man endured for four years while still getting more done than Barack Obama did in eight. More than Barack Obama did in eight, more than Bush did in eight before him. Easily the best president of the 2000s. Quite possibly a top three president in American history. So, I don't, I don't think it's so much of the blind, quote unquote, loyalty. I think it is the fact that we all know that something bad went down. This election was not on the up and up. 
but people are hiding behind technicality and job titles and rules. The irony, you're going to hide behind the rule book when the rule book being broken is in question. So... I don't know that I just I look you understand where I sit on the whole idea of the possibility of civil armed conflict coming to this country I 100 I don't I don't see how it's avoidable I do not see how it's avoidable at this point and it's only going to get worse uh with the separation now the delamination if you will of uh, the Trump supporting base of the Republican Party from the establishment Republican Party. And anyway, that brings me back to Dinesh D'Souza. You know, it's funny watching this happen. You're seeing people are cho- people are choosing sides. And that's fine. That is your right that it's incumbent upon you to choose a side, in fact. But choose wisely because you only get to choose once. And watching these people fall in line. You know, Dinesh D'Souza, he had two segments today that really kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, the first one was where he was saying we have to choose the less. Yes, the Republicans are, are, are bad. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. Yes, the Republicans are bad in some ways. They're part of the very swamp that uh, Donald Trump is trying to drain. But we have to choose the lesser of the two evils. No, we don't. We We quite, in fact don't have to choose the lesser of the two evils you could argue that choosing the lesser of the two evils is part of the problem is why nothing gets done so no we we don't have to do that because we've been doing that and nothing ever happens you ever notice how the republicans are always on the defensive in terms of uh, legislation in terms of getting things done it's always democrats trying to do something and they're trying to block it democrats trying to do this we're trying to block it democrats trying to do this we're trying to block it democrats trying to repeal this we're trying to block it Okay, but when do you go on offense? When do you just stop being punched and start throwing punches? So, um, I was a little disappointed to hear Dinesh say that, but at the same time, look, he's a regular on Fox News. So that that comes with, I'm sure, certain expectations of how he conducts himself and the things he says and the things he doesn't say. So he's got to toe the line in his own right. And that's fine. But it's ironic that if you do that, you don't learn the lesson being enacted on the very organization asking you to toe the line, Fox News, and how they've been hemorrhaging viewership. So, you know, choose, but choose wisely. Because the problem is, and I think that's what we're seeing now, is that the people who we've put in these positions to speak for us don't in fact actually do that they just play their game get paid get rich and nobody bats an eye it's amazing how many these politicians these career politicians are are millionaires when their salary is only a couple hundred thousand that's kind of crazy but uh probably nothing right ignore the man behind the curtain anyway so that was the first segment where he said we got to choose the lesser of the two evils, which is such a cop out to me. That's such a crock. That's such a non answer. Um, it's, it's a very Republican thing to say. It really is because it just it leaves you with no it's a false choice. And you just it basically says just accept what's happening. It's very weak. It's very passive. Uh, then the other thing was when he kind of ran interference for Mitch McConnell, which again, he's a regular on Fox News. So again, we got he's had, he's got to toe the line. But he basically said, you know, there's two avenues here. There's the judicial avenue that Trump's going down, and then there's the legislative avenue. And Mitch McConnell is kind of signaling to Donald Trump that he's got to do it the legislative. <sighs> And it was such a, I don't even think he really believes that. I really don't. Because uh, he seems like a very intelligent man. Mitch McConnell is doing what Mitch McConnell does. Which is why the title of this video is what it is. 
Mitch McConnell is weak. The Republican Party as it exists is weak. The only reason the Republican Party even, you know, grew some hair on its chest was because Donald Trump. The man who they didn't want from the very beginning. Because he's not, he doesn't play by club rules. So, and again, I'm not talking about all. I'm talking about the overwhelming majority, though. I'm talking about damn near every last one of them. But Mitch McConnell is essentially a that man. And his wife is Nancy Pelosi, emblematic of the Democrat side, right? And I, I guess in this analogy, we would be the children. But He's that man who, oh, I'm just, I love her to death and I, you know, I'm, I'm committed to the, he probably doesn't even love her. He's committed to the marriage though. Oh, it's the marriage. It's this, uh, you know, I just, I said it and I, I'm just going to stick to the vows of this marriage. Meanwhile, this bitch is out the house seven days out of seven, drunk as shit, out with her friends, coming in all hours of the night, got dudes calling the house, running up, <laughs> running up his credit cards, do whatever the fuck she wants. And he just takes it. Oh, you know, I did this. Uh, I broke this. I need this. And he just takes it. Oh, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, uh, I committed, you know, and I got, oh, gosh darn. So, and she, and, and she just continues to do whatever she wants. And she laughs in his face. She has no respect for him. And you and I. The children are just sitting there watching us. And at a certain point, you're like, wow, mom, mom is a total, she's out of her mind. But at a certain point, the narrative changes from, okay, Mother Nancy is a bitch, to, wow, Father Mitch, you're a pussy. And at what point is it like, hmm, yeah, I really, she's insane, and what she's doing is wrong, but you're just going to take it? Look, and then they try to, you know, they save all their gusto, they save all their, their oomph, their emphasis, they, 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 then they try to base up on their supporters and say, well, we need to keep this and you need to support us because we, you know, what are you going to do? Let the whole constitution get flushed out of the toilet? Well, motherfucker, you ain't fighting, you're not fighting for it. It's, it's being flushed as we vote for you. So I fail to see the harm in not doing it. And some people um, have become acceleration, what, what is called accelerationists who just say, you know, fuck it. Let the Democrats take it all. They're going to ruin everything. And then maybe people will wake up. I, unfortunately, am not that optimistic. I really am not. I... I think, look, I, I kind of floated out there a little while ago uh, on Twitter. Uh, that's at Forever Hog. Uh, I, 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 tw I tweeted out that, you know, maybe, maybe another political party is the way to go. But, you know, the more I think about it, what's to stop them from kind of slinking and sliming their way into it and infiltrating that? So, uh, you know, philosophically, we're just, we're not... We're not the same. Morally, we're not the same. Uh, I, I don't understand the art of concession. I do not understand fixating on the process when the process itself is at stake. You know, I was listening to... Uh, uh, an episode of uh, Jocko's podcast today when I was riding into work. He was talking, he was talking to Jordan Peterson, and um, they were talking about uh, what makes a good Navy SEAL, and he was saying, you know, one of the things that makes a good Navy SEAL is you've got these people who are criminal-minded, but they just know how to control it. And again, I'm paraphrasing. And Jordan Peterson was kind of alluding to the same point, 
that you want to be that guy who is dangerous but disciplined. Well, you're capable of breaking the rules when the situation dictates and your moral compass is kind of indicating that this is a time when the rules need to be broken. But overall, you follow the rules. And I'll be damned if that's not... That's not just what makes a good Navy SEAL. That makes that makes a good just about everything. It makes a good athlete. Makes a good politician. Makes a good cop. And I'll have to come back to cops because, you know, I'm going to have to revise my back to blue. Because I can't support cops that are falling in line with. making people not work. I can't fall in line with those cops that are enforcing unconstitutional rules. And they're not even really rules because governors can't make rules. The state legislature can, but the governor can't say everybody has to wear a mask, nobody's allowed to work, and that be enforceable. That's not how the Constitution works. And that seems to be our fundamental difference is that some of us actually give a shit what that piece of paper says. And the rest of us are just using it as, you know, just a, a reference point, a jumping off point. And man, so I can't I can't go along with with cops that do that, because the bottom line is, regardless of what is said. Oh, it's about it's about law and order. It's about this and that. No, it's not. Fuck off. Because you can make the argument that you doing that is actually going to lead to less order. And people are going to give a shit less about the rule of law when it's used as a truncheon to beat people over the head with. People who are already down. People who are already d in despair. Who People who are already facing the worst year and possibly the worst financial crisis of their life. But your check keeps clearing. And that's what it boils down to. Well, if I do what they say, then I still get paid. And okay. That's a very human, that's a very basic human reaction. And no one can fault you for feeling that way as a person. But at the same time, do not claim to have some kind of moral authority over me at that point. So I'm actually going to have to come back and revise that podcast now because I, there's a lot of these enforcement people who I do not support at all. And you're literally biting the hand that feeds you. We're the side that likes you. We're the side that has your back. So fuck around and lose our support. And then we'll see what's what. But, um, yeah, I, that's a whole different thing. I actually don't want to get into that right now. Uh, just to put a fine point on this Republican shit, man. Uh, fuck them. We don't need them. They need us. I sincerely, I, what I would love to see happen is the citizens of Georgia sit this one out. Sit it out. Vote third party. Do what you got to do. But don't put these people in who are just part of the club. And it's hard to know who's who. And we're all going to have to start paying a lot more. I think that's the overall overall moral of this entire story between the media, between the what happened with the election, between uh, these people who we've elected is we need to start paying attention again. And we need to start actually gaining our information from multiple sources. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I got for you today. Uh, yeah, man. Mitch McConnell bending the knee. But that's what they do, man. That's what they do. It's still not over yet. Uh, the Donald is still fighting like the Donald does, man. And uh, we will go from there. We'll see what happens next. Uh, ultimately, it's going to be in Mike Pence's hands. And imagine what happens if he... Uh, wow. That's going to be ugly, right? When he's counting the votes and... 
Well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I got for you today. Uh, Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, I will get up with you guys next time, all right? Peace, y'all.